okay this is going to be a pretty long video there's going to be two tier lists one is for shimmer priority for shimmer records and the other one is going to be the priority list for the shimmer reverbatron now there is a difference because you can save your shimmer records but in the case of shimmer reverbatron you cannot right you have to pick and choose when you reach the 90 day period and that is why i include even resonance in this one whereas in the shimmer records i do not include shimmer uh, the resonance because in my opinion it's not worth it to go for resonance with shimmer records i don't care if you're you know the luckiest free to play player ever and you have all of these units in your account it's best to just wait for the next upcoming op shimmer uh, legendary and uh, spend your shimmer records on that you know most of these uh, resonance are going to be good for your account but getting a brand new op shimmer legend uh, is going to push your account even further these are going to be the priority list i have it up until eight and then one is not worth it i have this tier right here is because um some of this uh, or you know one of this shimmer legend is just not worth it to get at r0 even if you have extra shimmer records to spare it's best to just save up your shimmer records for the next upcoming op unit or even go for resonance yeah let's go straight into it the first not worth it unit i'm gonna put is unas at this point unas just doesn't do enough his kit just is too lackluster for a shimmer legend he's a good legendary but not good enough to where you want to summon him with uh, shimmer records so his s3 ap push with 30 percent uh, ap and then three turns of cooldown and his s1 has a defense break this is very good but that's all he does right in pve that's just not enough at R0, you only see him use in um, Shadow Guild and sometimes Shadow Stream. But most people that do use them in uh, Shadow Guild and Shadow Stream is mostly at R2. It's not at R0. R0 is just too weak. He doesn't really offer much. And some players do use him in um, Falsetto Fantasy as well. But again, it's mostly at R2 and not at R0. Okay, this guy does use it at R0. Again, you can find some uses uh, for him. But he's not really going to add too much to your account. And he's oh, it's pretty much useless in PvP as well. He's just an AP pusher where he has been outsped by Tolan. And he also does AoE which means he's a counter magnet. Um, you're better off using Clara at this point rather than using an Unas. Um, and then the next unit at 8th spot, I'm going to put in Cecilia. Cecilia just slightly above Unas because she does have a use which is PvP. She is one of the best anti-cleave unit in the game. All you need to know is that her passive skill is that when she gets killed, she will revive all of your team uh, with a 50% max HP and a fat 50% max HP shield. So in PvP, you will see Cecilia being used pretty often in a tank team. In a tank team, you're pretty much going to see either her or, or Mavis um, because of just how good her anti-cleave mechanic is right you go to legendary in uh right here and you'll see cecilia with a bunch of matches you see 2000 1000 a lot of matches and pretty good win rate as well um yeah very good pvp unit the only thing that she lacks is in um pve uh she doesn't see any use like even a single ounce of pve usage zero has no use in pve and that's why she's number eight she's purely for pvp and she's not the best at pvp and then the next unit at number seven raven okay raven right now she is being used for pvp very good unit for cleaving she does a lot of damage um you can also use her as a stripper in like a point war if you run her as you know a speedy unit because if you guys didn't know if she outspeeds the unit then she has a hundred percent chance to strip but the problem is in pvp if you're not running her with a shred pin she doesn't really you know do much for you she does a lot of damage but not enough to one shot the entire enemy team she's still very good because she has that very good comeback mechanic um the the runes that they gave her i think is on uh, avatara which means if she procs an avatara she can uh strip and steal a buff from the enemy and pursuit with her S, uh, S2 passive which does a lot of damage and also 
lowers your HP cap by a significant amount. So her her um, skills are dispels all debuffs from Raven, gains speed up, dispels all enemy buffs, and then uh, attacks all enemies. So when you ascend her, if she has higher speed, the dispel all enemy buffs cannot be resisted. Her passive is if she attacks a unit or if any of your allies attack a non-buff unit, she will pursue with this passive and also reduce the enemy's uh, max HP cooldown by um, what is it? 50, 100% of the damage dealt. Her S1 um, steals uh, buff from the enemy and also inflicts seal. She does a lot of damage. She also has some uses in PV PVE, uh, mostly in um, APEP, not so much in the other uh, Falsetto uh, Ritual Miracle. You will see her being used in APEP in Speed Clear Team uh, for 5 turns. I think you can also use her in 4 turns as well. There we go. Uh, because of the pursuit mechanic that she has. She is also being used in Andras. Some of the team does include her because of the pursuit. There we go. Rank 1, rank 2, rank 3, rank 4. Yeah, a lot of these speed teams will include her because of the pursuit. Uh, she's being used for Ritual Miracle. And for PvP, she's not the best. So she's going to land at le uh, rank 7. And then the next unit, I'm going to put in Jiang Juli. So Jiang Juli, he is only used for PvP, but he's very good. You don't see any use for him in PvE at all. But due to his recent buff, it has made, made him extremely viable in tanking and doing a lot of damage as well. Um, he doesn't nearly one-shot um, a fully tank unit, but he does enough, uh, especially with his Divinit, to cripple the entire enemy team. So if you take a look at the win rate, he has a pretty good win rate. Um, there we go, 61, 53. You can run him very good um, in the Mavis team. Um, you can also run him in a speed team. He doesn't die in one shot. He doesn't uh, die from the counters. He does a lot of AoE damage as well now. And he can also apply a full board stun if he drops into the demon mode. So yeah, pretty good win rate all around. The S3 only does AoE damage, but it does pretty good damage, especially when you have him at low HP. Um, and then his passive is when he takes fatal damage, he turns into demon mode, he increases his basic stats. And in demon mode, he does 70% of ignore defense plus 30% of his max HP. And the biggest uh, factor his, to his demon mode is that when you take damage, he gains a shield of 30% max HP. And this will renew every hit that you take, which is why he's almost unkillable um, when he enters the demon mode. His divinate is also very good. When entering demon mode, 100% chance to inflict stun on all enemies and ignores resist as well. This is why he's super uh, super good in crippling the entire enemy team. Um, if the enemy doesn't have any cleanse, that's one free turn for all of your team, right? Um, again, he's number 6. You could maybe argue Raven is higher than him, but I digress because PvP right now hogs all of the rewards. There's more rewards in PvP than it is on PvE. So I'm gonna put Jiang Juli higher than Raven, even though Raven is, you know, mediocre in both um, PVE and PVP. But this guy being slightly better than uh, Raven uh, warrants him at number six. And then number five is going to go to Tever, mainly because of his PVE godlike abilities. You cannot swap him out for any other unit for Desolate Lands. He's the best unit, the best DPS for Desolate Lands because of this passive right here. 600% of his attack as true damage and he also ignores 25% of the boss's defense. If you put him on the relief set, he just does 600% every single time he pursues with his S1. He's also very good for Falsetto Fantasy um, teams if you pair him up with, um, what's he called, Liam. You, he has fallen off quite significantly in PvP and that is mainly due to Ana and Mavis. Uh, I've already mentioned this in my previous video. Before Ana and Mavis was released, he was, you know, really good for PvP. He wasn't, you know, meta, but he was really good. Um, but now, you don't see really much use of him. See, 27% win rate, 13% win rate, super low win rate because of the fact that he will always target Ana. And when he targets Ana, he does zero damage. So, yeah. 
he's mainly here for PvE usage, but his PvE usage just is too good. That warrants him at number 5. And then number 4 is going to be New C, mostly for PvE as well. But if you're a new player, you can definitely use her uh, for uh, the towers, um, Temporal and Infinity, and she's going to carry you there. But her PvP usage is just so insane that um, she can land the number 4 spot, right? New C teams have about 70 to 80% win rate, which is uh, pretty insane. Um, because of the fact that she basically cri cripples the entire enemy team. Okay, this one is not too high, but if you include Tolin right here, Tolin has, yeah, 70 to 80% win rate. But her alone is still pretty good. I mean, uh, let's see. Yeah, 57% win rate is not too bad. Um, you need her to run the CJ comp at this point. If you don't have no C, you can't really run the CJ comp anymore because of, um, you know, the enemy can come back um, before, your en before your CJ even takes a turn. So what you want to do is that you use new C to completely cripple the enemy team for at least one turn so that your uh, CJ can take a turn and do his nuke, right? And then also with new C, her S2 will reset the uh, cooldown of CJ so you can do the nuke twice. If you didn't manage to one-shot the, the entire enemy team with his S3, then you will have it up again with uh, new C's S2. So new C again, her kit is... Her S3, 4 hits, dispel debuffs on each hit and then also the last 2 hit will increase the ability cooldown by 1 turn. This is massive, this is why the re this is the reason why she is overpowered. Her S2 is also very good, resets the ability cooldown of 1 unit and then also against speed up, also AP push and then her S1, AP reducing um, and it will increase the number of target based on the paper talisman that you have on her. Um, yeah, very good PvP unit, still has not been power crap. Okay, so now the top 3. I'm gonna do it all at the same time. I'm gonna put him at number 3. I, I can't put him at any higher because, um, I mean, Shrenpin is just, just too good of a PvE unit. So, Tolin, I'm gonna put him at number 3. He is very good in PvP and he has some uses in PvE as well. I'm gonna show you the PvE usage first. In PvE, he is being used for Kronos and Fafnir, and I think you can even use him in Andras um, if you tune it correctly. But the way that you use him in um, Kronos is that you let him die, and then Kronos will get the debuff from his passive. There we go. Kronos gets the debuff from his passive that when he dies, he applies this final passage, which reduces the carrier's attack, defense, and speed by minus 40%. This adds additively to defense break which means Kronos will have 100% defense lower on him and your units will pretty much do ignore defense damage at that point. So that's why he's extremely busted for Kronos but you do need him to die and then also people do use him in Fafnir with the same strategy as well. Him dying allows for Kronos to take more damage from his uh, thingy from his final passage and then your Mateo just ends up one-shotting the uh, the boss, right? So that's how you use him in uh, Kronos and Fafnir. That's pretty much his uh, PvE usage. In PvP, he is insane. Check out his win rate in uh, Knockout. The reason why he's insane is because he is the fastest unit in the team and uh, in the game. And whenever he gets his turn, it's pretty much a 4v5 from that point on, right? So yeah, take a look at the win rate. 78% win rate with 3,000 matches, 73%, 78%, 57%, 80% win rate, 89%, this one with is with Ana, 81%, 52%, very good win rate. Very good win rate all around, right? And that's why he's, um, I would even argue he's at number two like this, but, but Xuan Pin is, you know, another beast for PvE. Okay, so the reason why Xuan Pin is number two and not number one is because Right now, the layout of the game has the rewards more towards PvP than it is in PvE. If you go to any of the PvE contents, the, P the rewards that they give you through ranking rewards is not even close to uh, the PvP ranking rewards. In PvP ranking rewards, you get straight up like 10 Shimmer Records if you score well, right? And then in Beatbout, 
you get nexus crystals per day based on how high you rank and uh, lastly point war as well you get nexus crystals based on how high you get but in pve for the ranking rewards the most that you're going to be looking at is the falsetto fantasy and the falsetto fantasy rewards is good but it is not good enough for pvp uh, compared to pvp right you get a bunch of uh, divinite discs but again this is only one rewards whereas in pvp you get three rewards of uh, ranking rewards and that is why shrine pin is number two shrine pin not so much for pvp but in pve she is busted right at the moment she was released she was the best uh, support to ever exist if you have her you will use her that's a bunch of stuff but all you need to know is that the horse buff is what makes her super uh, busted and broken and the miss rate up um, allows you to get some insane score for pve um, scoring contents and then for the s2 she has aoe defense break and then also uh, grants one ally the cannon buff which ignores defense and then her s1 ap pushes horse and chariot units the thing that makes her even more busted is that uh, this general buff whenever she casts any of her skills or even counter attack she will call in one ally that has the soldier buff to assist so on top of all these buffs that she provides she also has assist mechanic um, if you go to any leaderboard uh, pve bosses she will be there people that have her will use her there's no questions about it in sonica you can use her in forbiter anywhere anywhere that has um, scoring mechanic she will be used yeah there's no exception to whether you want to use her or not you will use her uh, in pve ritual miracle since she does need to take a turn for her to you know play the the bus she has not seen much use um, especially when we've gotten units that can go even lower than uh, five turns right so shrimpin has not been used as much but still sometimes being used in uh, the higher turn count uh, turns so in chronos you can still find some uses for her in apep not so much because we in apep we can drop the turn out turn down by so so low that you don't even need to run uh, a shrimp pin so um, she's not being used as much there in Fafnir she's not being used because of her pursuit mechanic or assist mechanic it makes her very unreliable when it comes to Fafnir because you want you don't want to do too much damage and in Andras uh, she is being used because of her um, assist mechanic and because of her horse buff cannon buff everything right must have in uh, desolate lands at this point you go to leaderboard anyone who has her will run her for all of these uh, shadow bosses she's like the best unit so in pve she's busted but in pvp the reason yeah I, the reason why i can't put her in number one is because in pvp she lacks quite a lot so with the release of anna again i'm gonna mention this a lot of times with the release of anna it has made so many u units um unrunnable in pvp because of how strong anna is right if you take a look at shuan pin her win rate is pretty low so 34%, this one is only has 73% because it has an Ana. Uh, if I would not include Ana, yeah, the win rate, okay, this is pretty good. But this is, I think it's a full R6 team. But, but aside from those, the win rate doesn't really, you know, get that high. So we have like 13% win rate right here, 48%, 34%, 36%, yeah. So... She's gonna land at number two spot again. It's not that bad. Number two is still very good. If you have an Ana, then go for her, right? So yeah, number one. Let's talk about the most OP, most unfair unit in the game. Um, she's a little bit neutered in the rival rune system because they gave her a uh, wind set instead of ocean waves. If they were to give her ocean waves, she's like you know unstoppable, right? But they gave her wind set. She's still extremely strong, uh, extremely strong, but not as good as Ocean Waves Ana that you can run on, you know, Point War and stuff like that. She has block mechanics, which comes from the Rainbow Shield. Um, she consumes one stack to completely block block a single target, a uh, single hit attack, and then she also has this revive mechanic. Not only that, the revive mechanic gives you an instant turn and dispels all debuffs. She is the best. Um, bruiser unit that you can get for a long time if we take a look at other bruiser units like hide 
uh, Genie. Hyde only has one revive mechanic, and that's it, right? And he doesn't even get a, an instant turn. Genie doesn't have any revive, but she has those healings, and she can be debuff debuff. Anna, on the other hand, revives, cleanse, gets an instant turn. And on top of that, she has a hundred percent chance to counter attack. This is why she is extremely busted right now. Um, if she is attacked with the Rainbow Shield, she will counter attack with her basic ability, and her basic ability hits like a motherfucker. One hit of 100% of attack, 20% of the enemy's current max HP, and ignores defense based on her speed. All of her attack ignores defense based on her speed, and she also provides immunity and crit damage up. She is just too busted right now. If you go to PvP, you take a look at her win rate. She's uh, completely busted, 80%, 90% win rate. Still, even with the, the bad rival rune system, um, we can still see her win rate is just absurd. So yeah, 80% win rate, 65, 73, 73, 71, 89% win rate. Okay, this one is 50%, 66. It doesn't even drop below 50%. Look at this, 80%, 60%. 60%, 70%, 80%. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this win rate. How does it make sense? And she's on a non-optimal build. In PvE though, she doesn't see much use unless you have her at higher resonance. So, again, she's only pretty much purely for PvP. But the fact that in PvP is where the rewards are at, um, I would have to rank her at rank 1. If you're a free-to-play, it's best to go for her because you will get more rewards in the long run. There is too much rewards for you to let go for PvP um, rather than going for champagne, right? If you go for champagne, you're going to be missing out on most of these rewards. Um, like for example, if you're currently at top 1% and getting a champagne probably won't even budge you into top 64, but if you're already at top 1% and you get an Ana, that could maybe even bump you to top 64 and get you an extra shimmer record per week. And then also, not to mention, in Beatbout as well, she's a little bit easier to deal with in Beatbout because there's only one team and you can counter pick against her. Um, moving first generally can help you win against an Ana if you build your team right. But um, if someone runs Tolan plus Ana, then you can't really do much about that, right? So again, Ana number one, mostly because it's PvP, uh, mostly because this, PV uh, this game is centered around PvP at this point. And most of the rewards are located in PvP rather than in PvE. Again, this this tier list might change when we get the um, Celestial Anomaly, but I, I can no longer wait because there's only two days left um, until you can uh, pick and choose your Shimmer Reverbatron. So I'm gonna release it before you know you make your choice. Yeah, that's it for the Shimmer tier list for Shimmer Records. Again, keep in mind, this is only Shimmer Records. Okay, so now I'm gonna go over the Shimmer Legend priority for the Shimmer Reverbatron. Why is it different? Shimmer Reverbatron, as I mentioned at the start of the video, you cannot wait to pick your Aspers. Whereas for the Shimmer Records, you can save for future units, right? You can save for any time you want. Uh, whereas this one, once you reach your 90 days, you you will have to choose what, what uh, units you want, right? Also, before we get into the tier list, if you're a new player, please do not choose any units outside of the Shimmer uh, Legends. If you go for any of these uh, non-Shimmer units, please delete your account and start a new account. <laughs> this is your one and only chance to get a free Shimmer Legend. It's, there's a reason why it's called Shimmer Reverbatron and not just Reverbatron um, by itself, right? You want to go for Shimmer Legend. This one is all of this is just bait. Don't go for this. Please don't ruin your account. Go for the Shimmer Legends only. If you don't have the right Shimmer Legends, wait for the full 90 days so that you can get all Shimmer Legends to pick and choose from. Okay? Okay, I'm gonna only add one tier list here. So it's easier for you to see. Um, it's going to be ascending order. And um, the R0 is going to be the same uh, priority list as this one. So let me just sort it out real quick so this is going to be the same priority list um, if you don't have an Ana, go for Ana. if you don't have a new uh, Shuenpin go for Shuenpin 
if you have both of this go for a tolan if you have uh, you know you know the deal right okay so now we're gonna go into the um resonance tier list i have this at r2 and r6 and the reason is because r4 doesn't really change the unit that much so i would advise you know not to go for r4 try to uh go for r2 either r2 or r6 on these this unit and uh yeah so the first resonance that i think is going to be worth it if you have all of these units at r0 or whatever resonance that you have them is going to be r6 ana so r6 ana becomes completely broken uh for both you know you can use her in pvp now or pve now and she will be very good for you her r6 is that while having rainbow seed ana grants all allies 10 percent hp when taking a hit triggers one time per turn so she's kind of like um ashley in a way and this is pretty much like permanent um because her rainbow seed doesn't really go away that easily unless you can just one shot her um which doesn't happen in pve but in pvp um the only way that you can really you know reduce her rainbow seed to zero if you stun her and if you you know end up being an ana versus ana team right so at r6 she's going to cycle your entire team like an insane amount 10% AP boost every time she gets hit so every time the enemy does any AOE attack she will then proc and assist um, sorry then proc the AP boost and AP boost your entire team so yeah she's busted now she becomes a PvE uh, monster as well the next R6 unit is going to be Tolan Her, his R6 is completely busted as well he becomes faster so if you have an R6 stolen, you will now outspeed, you know, below R6 stolen. So he gains 5 stacks of trackback and this trackback give, gives him 10 speed per stack. So at R6, he gains plus 50 speed. Again, this game, while it may stray away from, you know, uh, speed meta a little bit, going first will always be the best uh, way that you play the game. And that's why Tolan is so overpowered, right? Him going first allows you to control the enemy team allows you to make a 4v5 right off the bat and at r6 you pretty much will guarantee the first turn um, because he has the most speed okay this one is a little bit tricky i'm either going to give it to cecilia or tever i think i'm going to give it to cecilia now cecilia her r6 is that when she dies she will um ap boost is now changed to 100 percent ap and the problem she's not number one is because Cecilia can be countered if she is targeted first. So if she is targeted first, it doesn't matter how much AP that you gain if your entire team is stunned, right? If your entire team is stunned and Cecilia dies, she will AP boost your entire team by 100%, but you can't even take a turn. That's, what, um, that's why she's not number one. But this effect right here allows you to run Cecilia um, in a cleave team. So most likely your cleave units or your dps units will die and then the last remaining unit is going to be cecilia and then cecilia dies revive everyone with 100 ap and since you you died and revive you will not have any debuffs on you and you will guarantee take your turn after her is going to be r6 tever r6 tever is the biggest cheat code for pve um he becomes you know the pve god when a marked enemy takes a hit Tava performs a pursuit attack with uncovered truth triggers once every three turns if you go to the leaderboard ranking um in every single boss anyone that has him at r6 just has an inflated amount of stats so if you go to sonica sonica is his worst um boss but still uh his r6 makes him work because of the amount of pursuits that he does so again 56 million again 47 million with r6 Tava. Uh, this guy doesn't have an R6 Tavr. Okay, so so far only I think two people uh, has R6 Tavr. That goes for the leaderboard ranking. Um, again, in PVE you can still you can still use him in PVE if you have him at R6 because of the amount of pursuits that he does. But he still won't be the best, even at R6 because of Ana. Um, if he pursues on Ana, he will still do zero damage, right? But he's too big of a cheat code in PVE that I have to place him in a. The fourth uh, spot right here next unit i'm gonna have to put nusi over unas nusi it doesn't seem like it does a lot but if you take a look right her r6 is that when shenpin has general stacks 
uh, General grants one stack of soldier to all teammates at the end of her turn. So every turn that she takes gives you the soldier stack and if you don't know, the soldier stack, if you have 5 of them, it transforms into the sh uh, chariot stack. The chariot stack gives you plus 50% speed. This is absolutely massive and also 10% attack, but mostly because of the speed. Your units become extremely fast and you know, having Shran Pin allow you to give soldier stacks every time that she moves. Again, it doesn't seem like she does a lot with her arch sticks, but if you take a look at it in play, it actually does uh, a shit ton of stuff, right? Giving your team a solid plus 50% speed. This is not base speed, by the way. This is overall speed is insanely powerful. Yeah, she's gonna go after Tever. I think I still think uh, Tever R6 is still going to be uh, better for your account compared to R6 uh, Shen Pin. The next unit is going to be Unas R6. Um, again, Unas is only good if you have his resonance, and he's really good for PVE when it comes to his R6 because he grants you AP every time he uh, crits with his S1. Um, his S1 does three hits, which means if you crit on all three he will give you 15% AP every time that he does his S1. So if you can run him on, you know, counter set, every time he counters, he, he, he adds plus 15% AP to your entire team and himself as well. So if he cycles a lot better, he will be spamming his S3 a lot, even more AP push. So your team, your entire team can be, you know, a lot faster. It's a, pretty much the same situation as uh, Shen Pin, but I think Shen Pin is a bit better because Shen Pin also gives you 10% attack, right? Whereas this guy, he just AP pushes. Again, it's very solid for PvE. Um, not so much for PvP, but these units are just a monster in PvE. When you get them at R6, that I just have to uh, rank them highly. The next R6, I would have to give it to Nu C. Now, Nu C, uh, when taking a hit, no longer consumes Paper Talisman. This is huge for PvP. So if you guys don't know, Nu C, if she has the Paper Talisman, when she gets hit, she will gain 20% AP. Now, um, she will no longer consume the stack, right? Once you have casted her S3, every time she gets hit, she will get plus 20 AP, which means she's going to cycle a lot better for, you know, PvP. Again, I can't rank her build, uh, above Unas, R6 Unas, because um, when you use Nusi, the match pretty much ends as soon as you can cast the first skill, right? The, the, the first S3. Uh, the additional stuff, doesn't really matter you know having the r6 is very good uh, for pvp if you're going up against a very tanky team uh, that can sustain through all of your you know um support uh, controls and everything uh, that is going to be where you she's gonna shine the most um and against like units that cannot be stunned or units that cannot be ap control she's gonna be very good in because um then they will end up hitting her and giving her more more ap which means she's going to cycle even better and cast the S3 faster. But it doesn't change the nature of the unit that much. She is still going to be, you know, the unit that when you cast the S3, the enemy team is pretty much crippled at that point. The R6 just makes her better um, against tank team mostly. And then the next R6, I think I would have to give it to JJ. Uh, JJ's R6 is that when he is in the demon mode, he will uh, splash, now splash to one more enemy. If this was AoE splash, I would put him at number one. Uh, but it's only uh, one more enemy. You know, if you land on the, the wrong enemy, it's not really going to do much for you. But again, this is very good. Um, if you're going up against like a speed cleave team, you know, you could kill two units at the same time with this one. The speed cleave team pretty much has nothing to kill him off or kill the rest of your team off, right? So again mostly for pvp and it's a little bit of rng based but i think it's very good i've faced a few r6 uh jang juli and when he lands the right splash damage um you can lose just because of that and then the last r6 is going to be raven raven doesn't really change that much um her defense break now becomes um before her attack and also irresistible the action of defense break is taken before damaging the enemies and can't be resisted when the target's speed is not above Raven's. So she's pretty much already one-shotting the enemies. Her R6 will help you one-shot better against those R6 teams. 
um, you probably won't even need to use a Shuan pin to one shot the entire enemy team but um, I think it doesn't really change the unit that much again the, the irresistible speed break uh, defense break is very good because then your cleave team will no longer rely on RNG of defense breaking right she becomes the best defense breaker in the game if you build her at a certain speed also at R6 she becomes a very reliable defense breaker for APEP as well because then she cannot be resisted right becomes very good for PvP, PvE um, and then now we're going to go over the R2 units um, again R2 unit I would still go for Ana as the number one because Ana at R2 is just beyond busted again Ana is just too broken of a unit that I cannot you know place her any lower than that her R2 is that when your allies take a hit and she has a rainbow shield she will also counter attack it doesn't seem like much but if the enemy does an AoE attack she does two counter attacks one from uh, the allies taking a hit and one from her base kit of the rainbow shield you cannot sustain through um, R2 Ana teams if you don't have like a full team that can you know uh, heal or provide a, a bunch of shield to you um, the only way that you can sustain through her R2 is that if you control her or you run a R6 Lian team and plus like a R2 Jin Chu or something like that so that you can gain shield every time that she counter attacks that's the only way that you can uh, sustain through R2 Ana she just does way too much damage and uh, yeah she's just number one for the R2 list the next R2 I think is going to be Cecilia um, Cecilia's R2 gives you a full reset on your entire team it's a full reset it's not like a minus one cooldown so um, at r2 you can start running her with uh, a cleave team so that if the enemy runs a a new c you can still go up against that team and still get outsped but because you revive with 50 percent ap and your cooldown gets removed or gets reset you can counter cleave those teams she becomes a completely different unit uh, whereas previously she only revives and doesn't really do anything else if your cooldown increased by your new C you pretty much just lose anyways right but if you have her at R2 you can uh, revive your entire team and then your AP pusher will have their skills up AP push and then your DPS will just um, counter cleave the enemy uh, team right you can also do a double cleave if you run uh, a speed team versus a tank team so you cleave and then the enemy team uh, kills off your entire team and then Cecilia will just revive your entire team and then you can have all of your skills up and then cleave again so it becomes a completely different unit whereas um, before her R2 you can only pretty much run her in a tank team but now at R2 you can even run her in a uh, cleave team next unit is going to be Tolan Tolan's uh, passive is that he now increases enemy's cooldown by one turn and it's re irresistible if he is dead. Extends all enemy's cool ability cooldown by one turn when Tolan falls, won't miss and cannot be resisted. Very good for PvP, he is pretty much a unit that you want to die because, because when he dies, he can come back alive with his uh, passive, right? So you can have this passive up or his R2 up two times um, within one game. Next R2, I would have to give it to, I think... Okay, this one... I, I'm gonna give it to Shen Pin. You can already run her um, without the R2. So her R2 is that her cannon buff no longer stuns. But sometimes you want to run her without any cleanser, right? You only have five spots to fill in. So her R2 can allow you to min-max your entire team. You can run her with like four uh, DPS with no immunity or no cleanser. And now her cannon uh, buff will no longer stun your units. Again, it's just a minor increase but I think it makes her very good actually no 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 I'm gonna put Unas over, over her because Unas at R2 becomes one of the best um, units to give attack up um, R2 is that grants attack up to all allies for 2 turns and because he has only 3 turns on his S3 his uptime is one of the highest in the game most uh, supports in the game only has about 50% uptime for their um, attack buff the best, the, the the best unit that has the best attack up uptime is right now Fusi, but he's random. Whereas Unas, he has a 75, uh, 75, is it 70? No, 66.7% uptime on his attack up, 
and because it's going to be built extremely fast uh, you pretty much have uptime on your uh, dps as per almost 100% of the time so again i always say this uptime on attack buff is very important because if you don't have attack uh, buff on your dps that's 1.4 times lower attack uh, damage that you're gonna do so again i'm gonna put him above uh, r2 shen pin next r2 i think is going to be either this one or this one i think it's gonna be jj jj now becomes a unit that you can uh you can't revive anymore and also the fact that he eats or he absorbs 30 percent of the target's attack this is very huge in a long fight um if you're going up against a tank team this can be very good especially if you're going up against a, a unit a, a tank team with like one dps if you kill off that D dps he will uh, absorb the attack and then he will do more damage allowing him to one shot even easier right and then the next unit i think is either going to be raven or nusi i think i'm gonna give it to nusi nusi is pretty good with her r2 let me see where is it so when paper talisman is active steals one buff from the target first shape of humanity is her s1 so if you have four paper talisman stack yeah actually i'm gonna bump her up uh higher than uh jj maybe even yeah i think i'm gonna give her higher than a uh, shuan pin this is massive because if you have four stacks of this uh paper talisman this s1 becomes a aoe five hit attack which means you're gonna steal all buffs from all enemies at least one buff right so she becomes a pretty insane unit um at r2 but i don't think she's better than r2 unas uh, again r uh attack up uptime is massive uh when it comes to pve game mode um but nusi's r2 makes her very good in pvp especially against like um teams that have a lot of buffs on them next unit i think i'm gonna give it to r2 raven yeah i think i'm gonna give it to r2 raven it becomes she becomes better in pvp because now she can cycle her passive better her r2 is that resets the cooldown for sunset her s3 now resets the cooldown of her passive it becomes pretty good um so now in pvp you can do a double cleave with her sunset if you're going with uh tolan and her and tolan does the s3 because he, uh, tolan is attacking a unit that doesn't have any buffs she will follow up with the sunset and then when you get her turn she will cast her s3 and then cast the sunset again so you can pretty much cleave an entire team like that um and the enemy will have like extremely low max hp cap they will pretty much drop to 50 percent max hp cap at that point i would even maybe put her above jang juli yeah yeah i think i'm gonna put her above jang juli Again, Zhang Juli's effect is very good, but he's still... I don't think it's better than R2 Raven, uh, in my opinion. And then lastly, is going to be Tever. I have Tever last, is because he only gets 100% crit rate. When you use rival runes, he gets plus 100% crit damage, right? Again, in Pv PvP, he can't really be used because of Ana, because, because Ana exists in the game, and because of Mavis and everything, so... This R2 will only inf uh, impact your PvE, but not that much. Only for PvE, for PvP, he's still going to be almost unusable. And then lastly, Unas at R0, he's going to be right here. Because I think all of this resonance is worth more than R0 Unas. Um, yeah, that's it for the Shimmer priority list. Again, you have about one day left, uh, or maybe two days, I think. I have, I think I need two more days to get my Shren pin. Because I already have an Ana. Yeah, I need two more spins to get my Ana. Again, if you're new, this thing is called Re Shimmer Reverbertron for a reason. Only get the Shimmers. I mean, you can follow my tier list. If you don't want to follow my tier list, please, just don't go for any of these non-Shimmer Legends. If you did already went for the Shimmer Legends, I don't know, man. Just delete your account and make a new one. I I I'm being honest right here. You're missing out on, on a free Shimmer Legend and making a new account to get your free shimmer legend is going to be better for you in the long run because of how rare these uh, shimmer legends are right let me know what you would think of the tier list again i've incorporated the uh resonance as well because for the shimmer reverbertron you cannot wait and uh save your choice once you've hit the 90 days 
or once you've hit like 55 days, the, the event will go away, right? So you will need to pick and choose what you want. And um, if you have all of those units at R0, all of the Shimmer uh, units at R0, then you want to go for the Resonance uh, afterwards. For the Shimmer Reverbertron, I'm going to go for Champagne because I already have my Ana. And then if they're not going to release a Shimmer Legend in the next maybe few patches, I might be going for Tolan for my uh, Shimmer Record. I do have about 50, 60 something Shimmer Record and I have the guarantee. I'm gonna wait and see maybe next patch or next two patch to make my decision on summoning on this uh, Shimmer Record. And yeah, that's about it. Um, let me know what you think about the Shimmer tier list. Both of this for the Shimmer Record and also for the Shimmer Reverbertron. Um, yeah, ciao.